I'd like to welcome everyone back to the 2012 Tradewise Gibraltar Chess Festival. Um, you've joined us at a very exciting time of the round because it's coming up to the first time control. Uh, the top boards st all still going on, exciting chess is being played uh, with some maybe surprise results on some of the boards. So let's jump straight into the action because we don't want to miss this stage of the, the match when the moves are coming thick and fast. So this game is between Shiroff and Ho and it looked like Ho was doing very well. Um, with these two central pawns. I definitely prefer Black's position here. Uh, promising stuff. And after King to E7, okay, the pawn, well, uh, yeah, we had this position after King F2 on the board last time. Knight to C4 was played. Good square for the knight. Controls this pawn. Uh, White will probably have to play Bishop to E2 at some point to kick the knight away. I think, I think Black's doing very well here. I think Black is in control. She can support her pawns with her king, and they're going to slowly march up the board. Good winning chances for Ho, which could put her in clear first place with a, a 2,900 performance. So this would be, I mean, this could be the first time um, a female wins Gibraltar tournament, wins all the money. Rook b7. So Shiro's plan of going rook b2 didn't seem that successful there. Not if he has to go rook b7. King d6, bishop d1. <coughs> Passive defence. This is going horribly wrong for Shiroff. Really, a really bad position this one. And uh, Shiroff, according to the time situation, only has uh, it has no time left. 30 seconds left. While Ho has 10 minutes left. A couple more moves there. We have e5, rook h7. Okay, so white will win this pawn now but the thing is these pawns are so far advanced they're going to be they're maybe too strong anyway too strong to deal with um the sheriff Sh Sh doesn't look very happy on the cam there does he so looks under a bit of pressure especially with the time situation uh rook h7 has been played um i guess something like king c5 could come next and then just keep pushing these pawns or maybe just e4 which you can just get on with a pawn push then rook takes pawn king to c5 with d4 next and they're looking, well, they're starting to look extremely dangerous then. So uh, that's what's going on on board two between Shiroff and Ho. Very interesting. It looks to me like Ho might go on to win this game. Uh, performing well above her rating and having the tournament of her life. Now, Almasi versus Adams, board one. Maybe Almasi had some small advantage, but it looked fairly even. The last position we have was after Rook E3, Rook E5. Rook c6, a5 was now played. Um, these guys have a bit more time than shear off. Um, okay, it looks fairly even still, doesn't it? I mean, this pawn is now well defended by both rooks. I don't. I mean, they could, they could agree a draw maybe soon. I don't, I don't see. I don't think there's much more play left in the position. If this is a draw, I think Ho will be clear leader of the tournament going into the last round. What a, what a lot of, that's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure on a 17 year old um, in, in, in this tournament, but she could win 30,000 pounds if she draws or wins tomorrow. Just think about that for a day's work. I mean, not a day's work, it's been a week, but having it all in one game, that's a lot, a lot of pressure to deal with. Um, but maybe if she wins today, maybe she's guaranteed the ladies prize. It's possible she could be guaranteed 10,000 anyway. So that takes some of the pressure off if you know you've got 10,000 pounds coming your way. Um, David Howell, straight into the action there. And the Queen's come off, Knight to E3 has played Knight D7. Okay, so White decided to capture on G6 first and then play Knight to C4. Um, White has a nice advantage here. Nice advantage because these pawns are weak, good Knight on C4. Some holes also on the King's side, King F8. Rook a1, intriguing move. Uh, okay, well I guess the idea is to pick this pawn up, but try to not allow this because the knight can go back. Anyway, let's keep up with the action. Rook a1, rook a8, and now rook to d1. And rook to d5 has been played. Maybe David should have taken that pawn. Um, what does he do here after rook d5? Does he go, maybe he goes f4, f4? I mean, okay, maybe black can hold this now because this a4 plan's coming in. If he can go a4, swap on b3, he doesn't really have any weak pawns then, or the b3 pawn is going to be just as weak as the c5 pawn. So black probably is holding this position um, so somehow here. A small advantage to white, but no, sorry? a4, yeah, okay, um, looks natural. And then let's say I can't go rook b8 because a5 drops. So a4, good move, and. Um, yeah, the game goes on there. F3 was playing. F3 in David Howe's game. 
F3 seems to be played in David's game, which is, oh no, A4 has been played by the looks of it. Yep, and then G5. So this is the stop F F4. Um, okay, and we we'll keep we we'll keep with this game for a couple. Of, and now F3, right? Now F3 has been played. Okay, so White still has something here. That, yeah, I mean, if you can get your king to E4, you're close to winning because then the rooks will come off. If you can st exchange off Black's strongest piece, this rook, you're, you've got very good winning chances. So, okay, rook David, a, David, a David certainly has the advantage. Rook to rook to a6 okay um the idea of trying to support knight to b6 and ridding uh ridding black of this strong knight on c4 then you get rid of this strong knight then you you you, you have some better drawing chances but maybe after knight b6 i hop in with knight to d6 um okay let's see if there's any more moves no more moves no more moves in Shiros game al massey another move there we have knight to b3 being played so trying to target a pawn like this, but that does look fairly even. I, I don't. I think that will end in a draw. Um, okay, we've had. Uh, let me have a look. Kulats, Kulats versus Polgar. So this was quite interesting. We had a funny exchange of pieces there, which led to well, there's material equality, but I think uh, Kulats's king is quite weak here. And uh, okay, Rook takes B4 was played. A little tactical trick, offering an exchange of queens. Um, if the queens come off, then black has won a pawn, should win the game. So now bishop takes f5 was played. Uh, g takes f5, queen comes in. Rook to b3. Um, and unless white can drum up some play against black's king, black is doing well here, but the queen can even swap this queen off with queen d3, and the a pawn's going to drop. So I think Polgar went well in charge here. Queen d3 was in d play, queen f6. And, uh, whoa, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. There's something I've overlooked here. This diagonal. If white puts the bishop there, that is a dangerous diagonal. Very dangerous. So, queen g6. Let's say I go... Where do I go my queen? It's, it's, it's intriguing. Can I move it anywhere strong? I don't know if I can. Um, well, queen, queen c3 has been played. Ah, oh, okay. Nice tactic there. Nice tactic. Queen c3. Now the obvious question is, what happens if here? Well, I guess we go check. False line with mate to follow. I'll just show you the mate. King to f2. Got to work it out now. <laughs> here. Oh. Right, where's... Oh, here. Oh, just here. Just here. Simple, yeah. Here, here, here. And then there's going to be some... Well, mate, mate will eventually occur. I mean, I think it's quite easy to see that here. Here, here. I mean, there's probably a quicker way of doing this, but that is checkmate. So that's your idea. One of the ideas behind queen to c3. Um, so we just get a position up on the board. If the queens come off, Judith's task is a lot easier. So, okay, queen takes d6, queen to h3 was played. Still a bit messy, this position, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's just been a very messy game. It's been up and down the whole time. Um, uh, here, I mean... What do we think about this? It's it's really unclear. Unclear. Both both kings are both kings are weak here. I mean, let's say I go. Is this going to be a draw after Queen F6? Oh, you're threatening Queen G4, Queen G4 and Rook H3. I forgot about the G4 square. So uh, how much time? Kulats only has two minutes to find a response to Queen to G4. It's not a lot of time to try to defend against that move. Uh, very strong move, actually. Well, can can. Israel, I mean, do you have to move your rook to go to f1 with your king? Um, maybe. Um, oh, I've got a nice trick. I've got a, okay, here, rook here. Threatening queen takes f8 check. Queen takes f8 and bishop c5. Maybe. So, um, uh, yeah, the threat is queen takes rook, bishop c5, rook e8. So a counter move and also now the f1 square for my king. Um, Wow, uh, rook to e1's been played. Okay, and with two minutes left on the clock. Does Judith have to go for a draw soon? Has she got enough time to work this out? Judith only has three minutes left herself, and you're faced with some threats. You know, you know, this, uh, this queen takes f8 is, is a nasty threat. Obviously, you've got a draw by playing either rook g3 or queen to g4, but is there anything better than a draw after king to f1? I'm not sure there is better, anything better than a draw after king to f1. I mean, it, this is something you've got to avoid. <laughs> Rook h3, because there's trick. Maybe you have to move your rook back. Uh, but then just queen to f6 happens, and uh, another checkmate threat. 
and I think this might enter in a draw because white's threats now are building very quickly with queen f6 as a threat and queen f8 as a threat um, you've got still these pieces protecting your king so maybe a draw is going to happen here oh no judith doesn't like draws does she um okay well she's played rook to c8 right okay so what's happening if queen to f6 now this is the question can we go rook to g3 takes takes is there any way to win this well, I don't, I don't see how, how uh, black can ever win this position because I'm just going to, my plan is just to move my king like this, isn't it? I mean, I think it's just a draw. I don't think there's no way you can force my king forwards in this type of thing. If you could fit, uh, force my king forwards, rook c2 would come with check. But this is not possible now. So um, after queen to f6, has this been played? Um, what can black play for a win here? This check again, does this do anything? Let's have a look. Check, just king f1. I don't think that helps unless I'm missing something here. Um, there's no more checks except for Queen H3, really. Not any good checks anyway. So um, that doesn't help. So after Queen F6, what is Judith's plan here? Is she going to play Rook G3? Well, Queen to E5 was played. Queen to E5. And this is still a draw after Rook to G3 because you have to take this and then you can just go obviously with the checks but there is another threat in how queen to e8 there's so i think judith unless there's some real real uh, unless there's a win that i've missed anyone see a win for judith here any ideas how she can win i can't see it i can't i mean look i mean uh, she's only got two minutes to try to work out a win here otherwise she's going to have to play rook to g3 and i think it's just a draw there's too many frits against black's king so very exciting game there. Let's move back to the board two clash between Shearoff and Ho, because this is heating up. Shearoff very short in time, and we have a race situation. So this is all in for both sides. Let's go for the action quickly. We had Rook H7. Black decided to take the A pawn first um, after King C5. Bishop C2, Knight takes A4. And now if this Knight is ever exchanged, um, it's clear that black should be winning here because the pawns are much further advanced than white's ones. And this is what it's all about when you have um, the, the past pawns. So h4 is played, knight to c3, bishop f5. And again, I, I mean, I like Ho's position. Anyone, anyone, uh, well, black's doing well, yeah? Black, black could win this game. And then black would be probably sole leader, one round to go beating shear off in the penultimate round nerves of steel this this uh, <laughs> this woman's got nerves of steel she really has <laughs> she doesn't crack she just can she can beat all these players she can she's got self-confidence and nerves of steel bishop f5 um well i mean it could be it could be a draw because one thing white could try to do is swap this bishop off for both the pawns and uh, that's one way to try to draw because rook and knight versus rook is a, a, quite an easy draw so that's possible um, I don't really see I mean it's going to be hard to achieve but black is pushing for the win there Adams do we have anything going on El Massey Adams any well okay so there is something going on let's have a look last position after a four, a5 roughly knight b3 and now Okay, so white's going for the A pawn, black on the other hand. Okay, is that pawn there? Is that pawn gone? Well, it's getting a bit interesting now because this has happened. And, well, I mean, this is, this is a, it doesn't look, a draw looks less likely now. I mean, Adams will be so annoyed if he loses this game. Really seriously annoyed. Um, and, will he lose this game? I don't know. I mean, the A pawn's dropping, I think, but he's got an active rook now, so I don't know. I mean, it's just, uh, uh, how does he look in the, does he look, he never looks worried. Can't tell from his reaction, only by El Massey's reaction. We have some more moves, so let's see what's happened. Knight D2, oh, okay, that's, that's a move, isn't it? So the A pawn might not be dropping now, because uh, of knight to F1 is a big threat. I mean, Adams could even win this game, couldn't he? Because of, uh, 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 I mean, because of this king, the king on h2. There's some mating ideas here. Exchange uh, on e5. Exchange on e5. Okay, now probably just king g3. Oh no, knight's on pre. So you have to take on, okay, I forgot about this. So, so white should probably just go, white is pushing for the win, that's clear, sorry. Miss this knight on b3. Too many balls to look at for me at the moment. Getting quite 
difficult. I mean, this is out around this board too. Yeah, I mean, uh, this. <laughs> Look at it. That's well. I think they're looking at multiple games here. I mean, there's there's some all all exciting games going on. Not just this one. That is a big crowd. That would be a bit off putting if you if you had that. Wouldn't you? you know, all those people looking at your game and your short and time. I mean, um, well, Al Masi can just take on D2 and go Rook takes A5, um, which is some winning chances um, because the E pawn is weak. If the pawn was on F6, it should be not a straightforward draw, but a draw. Uh, but a pawn on e5, um, well, it looks it looks a bit a bit more difficult to draw this because it could be a target later on. Um, so, well, Adams can't win. That is clear. Two result game yet again. The final last position we had was after th this position after f takes e5. We haven't had any more moves yet. They've meet, they've reached move 40. That's the reason why. So now they can slow down. Move 40 has been reached. Uh, they can consider their options. Can't see much else except when knight takes d2. I uh, don't think there's any other moves are there there because oh we I mean I suppose you could take this pawn I mean is your I don't think you have is your, I can go King G1 can't I which uh, which is one way to try to play for win keeping a pair of knights on the board that's I mean if you really want to win the game this is maybe one thing to do from the white perspective keep the knights on the board gives you better winning chances but depends how good that other ending was uh, okay let's have a look at Shirov has reached time control as well he was in dire time, real, time real, straits real trouble there so there's only a couple more moves than that one and we had um, knight c3 bishop f5 now rook a2 came king f1 and okay well they repeated once here I doubt there'd be okay king f1's been played I'd be amazed if black goes for a draw here I think I don't think Black will go for a draw. I mean, like I said, she's an extremely impressive player, and um, I, I think she's the only one trying to win this. I mean, she could put the king on e3, can she not? Put the king on e3 and go for mate. Let's try that. King d4. Let's try it. I mean, maybe maybe it's another way, but king king here, king here with rook a1 mate ideas, and also then with my king on e3, I can try to force through my d pawn. Um, this pawn's still got a bit of way to go. Uh, well, okay, they've reached move 40 there, so we'll come back to that game a bit later. David Howell also making the time control, even, even though he was down under a minute. He, he was very short, so we get up to date in David Howell's game.